about 10 after 6, and we are on our way to Fire Station 10, my home, my second home, because I spend about a third of my life there. And uh, did my morning cardio before I picked Nola up. I'm on the uh, ambulance today, so try to get there as early as I can and relieve the guys ahead of me. So we're, uh, we'll be there in a few minutes, so we'll be in for uh, hopefully some action today. It's going to be a hot one. It's going to be like 100 degrees, and we'll see what comes of it. Pulling up to the station. Time to relieve the crew and park the big old truck. See, it says fuel efficient vehicle only. This is a fuel efficient diesel truck. So if you can get 18, 20 miles out of a gallon, you're fuel efficient in your truck. <laughs> and one thing I can never forget is my cooler and all my food, especially at the fire station where it's usually really good and really greasy and really not good for you. So we'll come in through the kitchen. This is a new station. Um, they remodeled it about a year ago and it's uh, one of the nicest stations in the city so again I'm lucky to have uh, such a nice place to work and a, a great crew to work with. So. All the guys are real supportive of what I do, and that's really important when it comes down to training and eating, you know, food, and they're not asking you a million questions, like, you know, what are you eating, what are you eating? They just know, oh, he's got his own food again, so we'll go ahead and get our stuff ready for the day. This is the kitchen. Pretty quiet in here. This will be where all the action is, though, because everybody always comes around the kitchen. Firehouse, kitchen is the place to be. Um, they got three fridges, three lockers for all different shifts. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and put my stuff up for the day. I like using eight shifts fridge because they don't have any food in it. So I'll put my eggs in. All my meats and stuff in here. sleeping. The person that has the watch usually uh, keeps an eye on the phones at night or when the runs come in they go ahead and ring the bell. So, And uh, they're getting ready to put the flag up because it's 6.30 which is a few minutes the flag goes up and it's 6 o'clock at night flag comes down. This is what I'm on. A wonderful ambulance. Uh, we got a truck and an engine here so we have a we have a full company house. You know we have in the truck and ambulance, and so about 10 guys will be here today. So we're going to go ahead and get our stuff together. Mark, Welcome Nola, back. Nola, Mark. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet <laughs> you. Taking off B shifts stuff, putting on my gear. That's my stuff. So on the ambulance, you don't fight a lot of fire. If you do, we always got to be prepared. Putting the flag up at 6.30. He's the rookie here today, so he gets to put the flag up. See, and then across the street we have Chick-fil-A, which is a dieter's dream. Because about noon you'll smell all the fried chicken and it's awesome. <laughs> and if you could zoom in all the way over there, this is Yogurt Land. We go there during the summer when I'm not dieting or winter when it's really hot. We'll get ourselves a little treat at night. I'm going to go ahead and put my name. You get a login of computers and everything. Switch crews out. 
course, B shift is notorious for screwing things up. So, they didn't charge the computer and it's dead. That's awesome. So now, if we get a run, we're going to have to do it manually, which is not fun. So all our runs will come in through here. That's all the calls that's in the city right now. Um, so city's kind of quiet, which is good thing in the morning. Usually you pick up by mid-morning, that screen will be completely full. And uh, it, has, it has its peak days, uh, peak moments throughout the day. You sign in on this, this is where we do all our uh, paper, paperwork for the day. This is, you know, B-shift stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and get them off and go ahead and log me and my partner on and we gotta we'll go ahead and stock the ambulance restock it make sure it's good clean it disinfect it make sure we don't get any those funky germs that go on the ambulance and um, get that going need all supplies for ambulance stock it up um, it kind of goes in order. We have airway stuff, trauma stuff, all the medicine that we have on the ambulance, and then gloves, splints, and neck braces, and all that stuff. Usually, crew is pretty good about keeping ambulance stocked. I like to uh, usually overstock it a little bit so guys on the next shift getting on usually don't have to do anything. So, just the way I like to do it. So, I'm riding with. Mr. Boswick today. Mr. Boswick's one of the finest paramedics in the city of Dallas. He even wears a red shirt to match the animals. He loves it. He, loved, he loved it so much. Here to serve the citizens of Dallas. <laughs> These are our drug logs. We have to keep track of all the narcotic type drugs we have and uh, it's just good to be careful and we have to document everything real good. So in case nobody's stealing drugs, I'm going to partner's very thorough. He's one of the most thorough people on the ambulance, which is a good thing. I'll give you anal is what that right. means. So we're, uh, I need to replace oxygen here. This thing is dead. What? Zero air. This is oxygen, this is the uh, the compressed air that we use to fight fire with. This, uh, you don't want to take, people always say, you got your oxygen tank, it's compressed air, because you don't want to take oxygen in fire, because that would be, no, why not? And we have uh, ping pong tournaments every so often, and there's our little ping pong table. This is our jump bag, this red bag we call it. It's red, pretty obvious. We make uh, this one we take in about every call. It has about everything we could we can do uh, as far as start an IV, uh, intubate somebody. We got has all the drugs, the CPR situation. Uh, we have our blood pressure cuffs, our thermometer, uh, blood sugar test or everything like that. Here's all the airway stuff my partner has. We are, we know how to use it, but we don't like to use that stuff, so. Because if we have to use that, somebody's in bad shape. Again, IV stuff here, some airway adjuncts. Um, we just make sure everything's stocked, looks, looks like it's in good shape. Usually go in here. To do just overstock stuff like I said, or I'll yell at my partner, grab me. Uh, you know, we need some IV stuff. We're kind of low. Uh, we'll go ahead and check our light pack out. Check out. Just we have all our drugs over here. The drug trays. So make sure we're stocked up there. Every month we check these expiration dates. A life pack. We'll use this to check people's heart rates, oxygen saturation, CO2 saturation. Uh, we can do 
do all the see this where we do our CPR stuff. Run uh, you know shock people. You know we see people getting shocked. There's no paddles anymore. They just have the stickers and it, it monitors. You can adjust how much you're using. Uh, pretty amazing machine here. And you, this little thing can save people's lives. And it's super expensive and uh, it's pretty neat. We do it by airways, blue, you know, for anybody pretty much from head up, lungs up is blue. Anything you're going to use in the middle of their body, whether it's I, usually IV stuff in the middle and the yellow, and then trauma, red for blood, to stop uh, bandages, uh, cravats, you know, uh, gauze, all that kind of stuff, trauma pads. You know, we use ice packs there. Ice packs are probably hot commodity right now that it's like 100 degrees outside. So we'll stock the uh, animals up pretty good with some uh, ice packs. in an ambulance being a bigger guy. Not very easy, but I do it. <laughs> Test that out. Make sure that the uh, batteries are good. We make sure that it's able to shock someone. And make sure it's in, I guess, user-friendly condition. So it's running the test right now. Stocking it up a little more. Um, one of the best things we have in the is ammonia caps. As in a previous video, you saw Mark Flex, Winston, Anthony. Just keep going with that name, I guess. <laughs> Big Sexy. Um, get popped one of these. So. <laughs> these are good if somebody's kind of passed out, helps wake them up. You know, we don't use them in any uh, aggressive manner, you could say. It's more just precautionary to make sure everybody's okay real quick. Just a quick way instead of pinching them or something. So usually you smell that, you wake up. Make sure I got my gloves that fit me, 2X. And uh, we are, looks like we're stocked up, ready to go.